church say amen? Amen. 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 Won't you just tell him thank you, Lord? Potential murderers drove by our houses. We'll sleep, but God was watching over us. Sleep was still moving. Thank you, Lord. Woke up saying a brand new day we've never seen before. That means we had nothing to do with it coming to pass. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So when you think, T-H-I-N-K, you're a think, T-H-A-N-K. And sometimes you just have to say, Lord, because of your character, I thank you for the blessings I don't even know about. But I know you're such a good God that it's just like you to let me catch your blessing. Anybody here ever just caught in blessing? Something happened and you just had to say, no, that was the Lord. And you have to be careful because folk will trick you with They'll be like, girl, you so smart. Man, you got it going on. You have to say, no, that was the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Ezekiel chapter 37. You give me a little more volume, feedback, or something, I'd appreciate it. to these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the Lord this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones I will make breath into you and 
and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, somebody say as I was prophesying, yeah. there was a noise, yeah. a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Yeah. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones of the whole house of Israel. No, no, no. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, O oh, my people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And I want to read verse 13 also. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. And when I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Amen. 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 Thus ends the reading of the word. I want to preach from the subject, the preacher dealing with impossibilities. The preacher dealing with impossibilities. Amen. You may be seated. This time, won't you repeat it after me? The preacher, the preacher. Dealing, dealing with impossibilities. With impossibilities. Amen. Amen. Can these bones live? The life draining work of the preacher is a guaranteed failure. No, you didn't expect that. Good to see you, Sister Tony. It's a guaranteed failure. We are called to proclaim the unseen to a faithless generation. We are given a perfect gospel and told to preach it out of an imperfect vessel. Amen. Guaranteed failure. Yes, Lord. Moses was told, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Then God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that Pharaoh wouldn't do it. A guaranteed failure. Isaiah, according to Isaiah 39, was to preach to a rebellious people who refuse to listen. A guaranteed failure. Acts 28 and 27 says, For the heart of this people has become dull, and with their ears they scarcely hear. Guaranteed failure. Mm -hmm. Paul says, The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. <clears throat> but he for up uh, for themselves teachers having itching ears guaranteed failure I know it's not what you hear all the time but it's real talk uh, the uh, preaching has gotten many a prophet uh, apostle disciple evangelist on death's row Jesus included, Peter included, Paul, all included, it is a guaranteed failure. All right. <clears throat> there are many who make the mistake of thinking, and some have, have jumped into preaching, thinking that preaching is an easy little task. Mm -hmm. Coming up with a nice little speech every week. 
and getting a big paycheck. And it's something to jump in it off that false notion. But I'll tell you, if you preach and God didn't call you, preaching will kill you. It's, it's, it's preaching to the God called preacher is a dangerous addiction. You get a case of the can't help it. That prophet says, I, I said I wasn't going to do this no more. But it was like fire. Yeah. Caught up in my bone. Oh, my, my, my. It's not unusual for the preacher to leave church on Sunday feeling pretty good. By Sunday night, meditate on Sunday morning. By Monday, he don't feel good no more. <laughs> but finds himself back at it the very next week. It's a guaranteed failure, but it's also a glorious failure. Because God alone is able to take our failures and out of our failures make sure his word doesn't come back void. Oh, y'all help me here. He's able to hit a straight lick with a crooked stick. And so, yes, it is a glorious failure. It is uh, us being sent out as lambs among wolves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's guaranteed failure. Mm -hmm. that, that we are sent to a crowd of predators assigned the task of proclaiming peace. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this prophet Ezekiel is given four visions in this, this letter, this book. Uh, this is the third of the fourth visions. In this third vision, the Spirit of the Lord takes him into a valley. Mm -hmm. Not a mountain. Okay. Not a rose garden. Not an oasis, but in a valley. Yeah. He gets the vision in a place you don't want to stay too long. Yeah. It's, the vision is it's a valley Full of, bones. full of bones. Yeah. Now picture this, if you will. You are in a valley, and all you see is a bunch of bones. But not just bones. They are very dry bones. There's no life there. There's nothing to suggest that life had been there recently. Because the bones were not just dry, they were very dry. And then God asked the preacher a question. Can these bones live? Right. The preacher is called to deal with this type of impossibility. Where it's death, and death has become the norm. And he's asked the question, can these bones live? It's an impossible situation. There's some of us who have given up on moving bones. And yet, he has to address a valley full of not just dry bones, but very dry bones. Now, science tries to determine based on the provable. Science is sustained by testable, testable explanations about the universe. Math deals with precision. But matters of faith are the objects of the preacher's concern. That, that I can't preach science. I've got to preach faith. Now, just as a footnote, if you think because we're talking about the preacher that it doesn't pertain to you, it does because if God tells me to preach it, he's telling you to repeat it. And so if God asks me the question, then my wrestling match over the issue becomes the preacher, the preacher's preaching, 
And then the result of the preaching affects the pew. Yeah. <clears throat> and so the preacher, number one, has to address the impossible concern, can these bones live? Y'all, it's easy to look around and just say, no, ain't no hope. What do the facts say? Sometimes the facts say, uh-uh, it's impossible. Can these bones live? Sometimes science says, absolutely not. Sometimes any mathematical formula that deals with precision wouldn't provide for you any hopeful optimism. So the preacher lives in a world of impossibility. Before Corona, mental health issues were already growing in our communities. I and many others warned that quarantining and shutdowns with unemployment growing would heighten depression and worsen mental health issues. I said to some preachers earlier uh, last week that now we got to deal with this faith issue of telling the community that we are people of faith after being medicated for something we ain't got. Right. All right. Yeah. You think about that on the way home. Yeah. And so now we're dealing with the increased gun violence yes. that is a backlash to not only the unemployment but the depression. And so as a result, you've got a valley full of dry bones. Yeah. Can these bones live? Science would possibly say, oh no, it's not going to happen. Mathematics would say, just look at the economy. No, it's not going to happen. As soon as you think things are getting better, gas prices skyrocket. Yes. Can these bones live? The divorce rate is still skyrocketing. Can these bones live? The majority of our culture has been out of church for months including our children, can these bones live? We've become a medicated culture from childhood to the grave. Can these bones live? Our Western culture has convinced most of us that we're suffering from a medicine deficiency. Can these bones live? Literally, will tell us, because you are a certain age, that now you need to start taking this medicine because generally at this age, you have to be concerned about such and such. Now you don't have it yet, but start taking the medicine just because at your age, you probably will soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so week after week, the preacher is called to answer this impossible question. Can these bones live? The news tells us generally, no. When is the last time you watched the news and felt hopeful? Most people would say impossible. Doom and gloom are the subject and verbs of our conversations. Can these bones live? But if the preacher says when he's asked this question too quickly, he's being partly dishonest because he's listened to enough doom and gloom, he ain't sure no more. Right. Oh, I hope y'all hear me today. But because when you think about it, if as the people of God, we really believe these bones could live, we govern ourselves differently. Amen. Oh, we'd we be looking for the crack house. So we can knock on the door to tell them about Jesus. Right. Instead of trying to get our security systems to protect us from folk coming out the crack house. Yeah. See how quiet y'all are? Yeah. Right. If we really believe these bones could live, we would not fret so quickly whenever the media tells us bad news because we would say, yes, that's your perspective, but there's another perspective, and that's God's perspective. So when we ask the question, can these bones live? Don't
don't say yes too quickly, because if you're honest, you ain't sure. Right, right, amen. That's right. Amen. But then, since it's God asking the question, and not science, to say no would announce your doubt regarding the power of God. So how do we handle this question when God asks the question? If it's asked at the barbershop, at the beauty shop, you can dance around it and you can give your opinion, but if God asks the question, how do you respond to the question? If you say yes too quickly, you're being dishonest because you ain't so sure. If you say no, you're saying, I don't trust you, God. So how do you handle this question? The old preacher says that this prophet handled it like a boxer against the ropes. He, he, he dodged punches and moved around, and he just said, oh, Lord, you know. And sometimes that's the best way to respond to life's tough questions. I don't know. I, I, if I say yes, I don't really believe it. If I say no, I'm questioning the power of God. Oh, Lord, thou knowest. Amen. Yeah. This is the preacher's dilemma. Constantly in the vortex of impossibility. When asked the question, even by preachers, post-pandemic, will folk come back to church? Some will, some won't. So even pastors have their concerns about what church will look like post-pandemic. How do you answer the question whether or not the church will thrive post-pandemic? Whether or not the church will do better or worse? Oh Lord, thou knowest. When the doctor says it's terminal, and that's, be careful of folk who always say yes too quickly. I'll never forget many instances, but one that stands in mind where a baby was beaten and uh, was, was, was in ICU on a life support machine. And one preacher who got there before I did told the mama, stop crying, this baby gonna live. If the baby don't live, it's because you ain't trusting God. This baby gonna be all right. When I got there, I said, I don't know what's gonna happen. The doctor said the baby ain't gonna live, that's science. I don't know what's going to happen. What I do know is that if you trust God and never doubt, he'll bring you out. Even if the baby gets worse, you can get better. Even if the baby gets weaker, you can get stronger. Lord, thou knowest. The baby did not live, but through that process, I was able to lead the mother to Jesus Christ. Sometimes things get worse on the outside, but they can get better on the inside. Lord, thou knowest. When the doctor says it's terminal, will these dry bones live when the child becomes increasingly disobedient and you're doing the best you can as a parent. Will, can these bones live when that relationship is ruptured and the friendship is fractured? Can these bones live? Somehow, sometimes you cannot say yes. Sometimes you cannot predict the optimistic outcome. You just have to say, Lord, thou knowest. That's the private work of the believer. Amen. To seek the wisdom of the Lord. Amen. Lord, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's a shouting point right there. Sometimes that's the best prayer you can pray. Yeah. Not, Lord, do this, yeah. but Lord, you know. Yeah. And since you know, lead me and guide me. Sometimes I can't see the way, but I know you sit high and you look low and you can see way said to the preacher prophesy preach speak to these bones so the preacher has to address the impossible concern can these bones live but then secondly the preacher has to address the impossible crowd 
a crowd full of very dry bones. This is evidence of God's unrelenting confidence in the preaching of his word. More and more in our culture, we're losing confidence in the preaching of the word and we're substituting preaching for anything. All right. Help me if you can. But I want to tell you, some things cannot be settled in your spirit until there's a word that's spoken. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord, God has an unrelenting confidence in the preaching of the word. Our foreparents made it not because politics was on their side. Our foreparents made it not because education worked in their favor. Our, our foreparents made it because even when they didn't let us vote, even when they didn't let us go to school, they messed up and let us go to church. And I want to tell you, when you don't have money, when you don't have politics, when you don't have a prestigious education, make sure you say, I want the wisdom of the Lord. Speak, Lord. Dry bones. A valley full of very dry bones. And God said, preach. It's not only an impossible concern can these bones live, but it's an impossible crowd. It's one thing to preach to sleeping folk. But y'all, it's a whole nother thing to preach to dead folk. And that's why we've got to be very careful when we start getting angry at folk who say amen loud. I'm going to silence them and tell them to hush and they shout and rejoice and we want to tell them it don't take all that. Well, y'all, leave them folk alone. Amen. I, I'd rather have a, a, a hot church than a dead church. It, it's, it's, it's easier to cool down a fire than it is to warm up a corpse. Ezekiel had to preach to a valley full of corpses. Bones, not only very dry, but scattered bones. They weren't even together. It's an impossible crowd. You don't preach to a valley full of very dry bones and expect a bunch of converts. But that's God's cure. He says, preach. And I want to tell you, some deaths don't call for an undertaker. Some deaths don't require a doctor. Some deaths require the man of God. Amen. Amen. Not Fauci. Not Bill Gates. Yeah. Not the CDC. Not Governor Ivy. Some deaths says we need to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Can these bones live? The statistics would say no, it's impossible. The numbers would say it's hopeless. Math would say no. Science would say no. But oh Lord, thou knowest. Thou knowest. Yes. Amen. Don't give Amen. your opinion so quickly. Amen. You see, when you start talking your opinion, that's really just for entertainment. Yeah. What I think is. What I feel is. And then you give the other person a chance to give their opinion and you can go back and forth. But when you're talking to very dry bones, they don't need your opinion. That's right. Amen. I wish I had some feedback. Amen. Amen. When you don't give your insight from something you read in an old dusty encyclopedia. Don't Google what you read when you Googled it. Tell them Dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes when you tell them what the word of the Lord says, mm -hmm. God is so amazing. God can use you to speak truth even when you don't believe it. Oh Lord, help me today. Because the power is not in your belief, the power is in the word. That, that's what that's what that's what Jude says now unto him who's able mm -hmm. to do exceedingly abundantly above. Amen. All I could ask. Mm -hmm. I ain't even 
price for it. All I can think, it ain't even crossed my mind, but it's according to the power that worketh in me. It's not an issue of whether or not God answers prayer. It's an issue of God answering what I ain't prayed yet. Y'all ain't hearing me today. It's not unanswered prayer. It's some unprayed answers. God has done for me things I didn't even know I needed done. It was sometimes things that if I had thought it through, I would have said, no, nah, don't do that, Lord. I would have asked for something else, but I would have gotten some worse in return. God says, speak to these bones. God's word is often spoken, but frequently unheard. I'm not talking about speaking to an absent audience. There's a guy, I believe it's on 3rd Avenue North on Sundays. He has his uh, megaphone, and he's, I think he's one of those black Hebrew Israelites. And he'd be out there just talking, and, and uh, I, 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 I chuckle to myself, because I'm like, not only does he not have a crowd, but those of us who are, are close to him try to go the opposite direction so we don't hear him. So I ain't talking about an absent crowd. I'm talking about having a crowd, but the crowd doesn't have ears to hear. I think, I think, I think we gotta deal with the fact that Ezekiel had a crowd. It was just a dead crowd. So what's better to have a dead crowd or an absent crowd? Well, the text would suggest it's better to have a dead crowd than an absent crowd because God's word can bring life out of death. God's word can resurrect the dead. God's word can transform what's scattered and united. But if ain't nobody there, you're just speaking to the wind. What does he preach? Dry bones? Hear the word of the Lord. That word that always brings peace out of confusion. That word that, that always brings hope out of despair. That word that always brings joy out of sorrow. That word that is an oasis of love in a desert of hate. Preach that word. Sometimes it's all you can do. Don't tell them what you think. Don't tell them what you heard on TV. Don't tell them what you Google. Just tell them, hear the word of the Lord. The preacher had to address an impossible concern. He had to address an impossible crowd. But lastly, y'all, the preacher experienced impossible consequences. I feel like shouting if I got to do it by myself. <laughs> dry bones, very dry bones, scattered, impossible. Picture this, y'all. It's a valley full of dry bones. You drive by, you see your pastor out there. Like, what pastor doing? I know Pastor ain't out here preaching to these dry bones. Lord, what that happened to him? <laughs> One of them flew off the cuckoo's nest. Ezekiel is out there preaching to a valley full of dry bones. Somebody today would have called 911. But by the time they would have gotten there, they would have seen impossible consequences. They would have seen a toe ball connected to the football. They would have seen a football connected to the ankle ball. They would have seen an ankle ball connected to a leg ball. They would have seen a leg ball connecting to the knee bone. They would have seen a knee bone connecting to a thigh bone. 
that would have seen thigh bones connected to hip bones. They would have seen hip bones connected to a backbone. They would have seen backbones connected to neck bones. They would have seen neck bones connected to head bones. They would have seen finger bones connected to hand bones. They would have seen hand bones connected to arm bones. They would have seen arm bones connected to shoulder bones. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And at the word of the Lord, dry bones came together. And God said to the preacher, it ain't a valley full of dry bones no more. It is Israel as a powerful army. And I want to tell you, if you keep watching the news, it's a valley full of dry bones. Watch it for a moment, but then go answer the question, can these bones live? Seems like there's a shooting in our city every day. Can these bones live with dry bones?
to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The privilege of the church is extended. The doors of the church are open. And I said to you all last week and I'll repeat it today, if you are not as close to God as you used to be, guess who did the moving? God had left you. If anybody strayed away, it's you strayed from him. But he's still willing and waiting to accept you if you would just give your life to him. God specializes. God specializes.
We'll thank you for impossible consequences. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this worship experience we've had. As our faith has been spoken to. Let us not just have, be hearers of the word, but then let us be doers. Let us be proclaimers of this word. Let us repeat what we've heard. Even if we've got to repeat it to dry homes. Thank you, Master. We pray that you would guide us in our giving that we would give even as you have prospered us according to our faith. And then we pray that you would guard us in our going. That we would have arriving mercies and traveling grace to our various destinations. We pray that the love of you, our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, even forevermore. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let us all sing together. Oh.